Hey, what's up, my guys, and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. Today, we're going to be revisiting an old project that I did. A lot of people have been enjoying it recently, so I thought I'd take another crack at it. Now, that is the old V6 engine. So I built this engine to be a very compact six-cylinder engine that kind of had a bit of a flair to it. A lot of the engines I usually work with are boxer engines or inline engines, and I wanted to see how well a compact V-shape would work. Now, this does technically work. It's really bad on its timing. I know some people have messaged me about it saying you could fix it by doing this or fix it by doing that, but I wanted to start from the ground up and make a new engine. But I wanted to make it not only bigger, or I should say not only better, but bigger. So I went with a V8. Now this is it. With this system, I use these little valves, as I'll refer to them, up here. And every time one moves in front of the sensor, it pushes the pistons. This uses a very similar concept. But as you'll see when I get it running, they work a bit different, but I do love how it looks. Uh, the majority of my engines actually use a timing plate, so it has a big plate at the front of the engine that the sensors read, and as the engine spins, it reads different parts of the sensors and does things like that. But this one looks so beautiful. It actually runs quite quickly, especially compared to some of my other engines. And if anything, it's just something I really love to stare at. You can see how the valves are working. Every time it rotates, every time it moves, it tilts the sensor, or tilts the uh, valve in front of the sensor, which actually causes the pistons to fire. As you can see, it's a very smooth rotation, very, I wouldn't say very fast, but a decent rate. But, and here's the issue. I have put this into a car. It doesn't really work. Now, some of the issues that were present during this engine's construction are still here, even though it does work much better, works a lot faster, and a lot smoother. This is, I have to admit, this is one of my smoothest engines I've built, and I am really happy with it. But one of the issues that will come up in the car is A, the complexity, the sheer amount of bearings and everything used in this, just the game does not like it. Mix that with the complexity of the car itself, and you have little to no frame rate at all. And another issue is the structure, because this has a bearing here, which is used as part of the main structure. That bearing is a very weak point, and its engine starts to separate, which you should be able to see here. You see the bearing shifting and jittering. It happens in this engine as well, but it is a lot less noticeable because there is a bearing here and a bearing at the rear, which increases its structure, but it still shifts as you can see. So now then, let us test drive this big boy. And my frame rate instantly went to 10 before I had something like 60 or 70. Uh, <laughs> you can just see the frame rate. So this engine runs in reverse to a lot of my other engines. So actually, to be honest, I think the engine that was in this car originally ran reverse to all my other engines. But with that being said, if I start the engine, it runs, but it chugs along at this frame rate. The frame rate itself hurts the engine. Now, because this engine is reversed, I will go backwards in first gear and the engine struggles. I do start to pick up speed, but the original inline six actually, I do believe is much faster than this. Even if it isn't much faster, just the frame rate makes it seem much faster. So switching out of first and the second, not much difference. And then we switch into what would be a reverse gear, but like I said, the engine is spinning in reverse, so this will actually send us forward. So overall, it's a really cool concept, something I would like to visit again in the future, but it's not really practical at the moment. It looks really cool, and I absolutely love it just watching it run. I love just watching this engine run on its own, but it's not very practical for its use purpose as a car engine, even though, to be honest, piston engines aren't the most practical thing to begin with. 
I guess they do have some purpose in very high load situations where even electric engines can't push that much weight. But like I said, I'd still like to revisit this in the future if I have any ideas on how to improve it. But for now, I think it's something I'm going to set to the side. So if you did enjoy this episode, please leave a like. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. If you enjoy the channel, enjoy what I'm doing, please subscribe. It helps out a lot. And right now, shares help the channel the most. So if you do want to help the channel, please share this episode with a friend. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around. And until next time, peace.